Hey, uh, class, I'm not trying to sneak in a lecture here. I wanted to give you a background to the prompt for next week. So what you're reading is uh, Harriet Jacobs, Incidents in the Life of a Slave Girl. I think maybe the only um, uh, runaway narrative written by a female. Uh, if not the only one, there are very, very few. And it was written, when it came out, It was it, the, the author was called Linda Brent. Jacobs had to hide her name because the uh, the Fugitive Slave Act uh, was in um, was still law of the land then, and and if she'd been captured, she would have been returned to her master. So, uh, but it was written and came out in '61. It was a pretty big uh, bestseller in in Great Britain, but in the U.S. it it got lost until the '60s and '70s when the combination of the Civil Rights Movement and uh, women's studies. Uh, began to look for books such as Jacob's, and it was just perfect. Um, it hits, kills two birds with one stone in one sense. It talks about uh, the slave uh, experience, but also the female slave experience, which is it makes it almost unique. Okay, so for next week, uh, I want you to look at an interpretive question. And as I've talked a lot about in the class, Grad school is all about looking at the interpretations that historians give about a, uh, a, a subject. And um, for many years, uh, in the 1950s in particular, uh, there was a guy by the name of Stanley Elkins, a historian by the name of Stanley Elkins, and he offered an interpretation of what it meant to be a slave. Uh, and he called it the Sambo interpretation. And this was very heavily drawn from uh, concentration camp victims. And it was, it was designed to be sympathetic to slaves. And the Sambo interpretation was that slavery was so horrendous, which of course slavery was horrendous, that it was so horrendous that it destroyed any sense of family among slaves. It just crushed that sense of family spirit. And so this was, again, Elkins is being sympathetic, and he's arguing that when we look at slaves and we, when we're interpreting the slave experience, that one of the things that we have to realize is that uh, slaves had no sense of family. Okay, so this is the famous Elkins Sambo thesis, which dates from the late 50s, early 60s, very much influenced by what had happened to um, the victims of, of the concentration camps. Okay, so that's the interpretation. That's the interpretation. It's a very old interpretation, but it is an interpretation that's out there. And for your question this week, and I'll write it up as well, I want you to start with that premise, that a historian has offered an interpretation on slavery that argues that it so, was such a horrendous and soul-destroying institution that it completely undermined any sense of family among slaves, that slaves had no sense of family or family units, that all family ties were completely torn asunder because of the system of slavery. Uh, this is how he interpreted slavery. And there were other parts of the Sambo thesis, but it's not relevant to next week. So we have an interpretation. And I hope you get from this, and I hope you're getting from the class, just how incredibly important interpretive models are. Because what interpretive models do is they're a creation of, the, of, a, of a truth, or at least a, an argument about what the truth is. And if you accept it, if you accept a, a historical interpretations, and there's all kinds of interpretations about all kinds of things, of course, uh, then what you're really doing is you're accepting a version of truth. Now, interpretations change, of course, too, uh, for various reasons. Okay, so to go back to uh, the beginning, this, this historian named Stanley Elkins, very sympathetic to African Americans, was arguing that slavery was so bad uh, that, it, 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 that slaves were sambos, that they had no sense of family, that all family ties were rent asunder. This was his interpretation. So for your paper next week, I want you to look at the evidence that you glean from the J Jacobs book 
and I want you to make an argument. And I want you either to support the Elkins thesis that slaves had no sense of family and use evidence from the Elkins thesis that slaves had no sense of family. Uh, and, and I'm sorry, evidence from uh, the Jacobs book that shows slaves had no sense of family or argue against Elkins and show from the book that slaves did have a sense of family. And this is how we use primary evidence. We use primary evidence to support in certain arguments and in other cases to attack other arguments, right? And so evidence, primary evidence, is data that is used to support arguments. It used to support interpretations. So for next week, I am positing Stanley Elkin's interpretation that slavery was so bad that slaves had no sense of family. And I want you to write a two-page paper with a beginning, a middle, and an end where you either support that the Elkins thesis using evidence from the Jacobs book or you argue against the Elkins thesis again using evidence from the um, from the Jacobs book. And this is a very small example of something that we do as historians all the time. We take data, we take facts, we uh, and we we take evidence and from that we make larger arguments that helps us make sense out of the various um, historical uh, episodes or incidents that we're, we're looking at. Uh, so do, do the facts, do, does the evidence, we can talk about whether or not this is true or not, does the evidence of this text indicate that Elkins was right or wrong when he argued that slaves had no sense of family? And again, use direct quotes from the uh, Jacobs book, and I'll write about how I want you to cite the Jacobs book uh, in my prompt.